we're going to take a few minutes and talk about how to effectively upgrade your Glock. This isn't going to be for hobbyists. This isn't a video meant for the folks that want to throw the stippling on and the different slide cuts and red dots and all the cool stuff that you can throw on a Glock. That's kind of a different realm in my opinion. And in all honesty, when you start doing that to a Glock, when you change triggers out, when you change uh, striker pin springs, when you change all the internals, you start drilling extra holes and slides, putting comps on it, doing all this stuff, you run risk of ruining the reliability of the design. And that does happen. Now, there's a lot of people that have shown that, hey, I got all this Gucci gear on my Glock, and then they go out and run it and go, well, I can only run this type of ammo through it now because it's finicky with other stuff. So why would you want to do that if you're wanting to get a Glock for real self-defense uses? Number one, the number one important thing before you get anything else is training. Train with the gun. That's the biggest upgrade, and it's more of a software upgrade, not a hardware upgrade. Get out and train with a gun. Practice good techniques, practice good fundamentals, and you'll realize that the Glock shoots extremely flat. You don't need a compensator. You don't need all this other stuff. You could just shoot the gun. Uh, and it's not costing you any money unless you spend, of course, some money for some professional training. If you choose to go other routes like online or whatnot, that's all on you. Um, just make sure it's good quality training and you do your reps. Do your reps correctly. Do them slow. Learn the techniques and you'll be fine. So with that out of the way, let's go with the actual hardware updates. So the first thing is going to be a light. You need a light. That's mandatory. If you're going to use this for duty use, if you're going to use it for home defense, get a good light. And I'm not talking about any light out there. I'm talking about a good light. Two brands that come to mind is Streamlight and Surefire. Those brands have proven themselves. There's other brands out there that are good, like Enforce. There's Nightstick Lighting, which has some good budget uh, 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 lights, rather. And Olight has a few. Now, I'm not a big fan of Olight but they do have a few that seem to work pretty decent for basic self-defense uses and they seem to hold up decently, but buyer beware, beware on that stuff. There are some issues with Olight. Uh, nightstick lighting, I've had them for a while and they're pretty good. They hold up pretty good, but I gotta be honest in the end, when I'm looking at all the lights, when I'm looking at the prices between companies like nightstick lighting versus Olight versus Streamlight, I'm gonna go Streamlight every time. It's just a a heavier design, a more well-proven design. I have stream lights on a lot of my stuff. Um, I have used Surefire in the past. I'm thinking about getting a Surefire, another like an X300 or whatnot at some point. But those are kind of, they're expensive. So it depends on what your budget is. Uh, for a budget price light, I'm going to go with stream light every time. But again, make sure you have a good light on the gun. Uh, the next thing, magazine upgrades as far as capacity goes. If you want to change the standard capacity of your magazine, uh, it's a good idea to do so, especially if you're in a duty or a home defense type role is what you're wanting to get this gun for, uh, where an, a, a bigger magazine is not going to be a big deal. In the carry conceal role, it could be, so buyer beware on that. But uh, you want to have a balance of ergonomics and handling versus capacity. Like, for example, I can certainly take a Glock 33 rounder and put this in the gun, no problem. And that's not a bad option at all. You can run a 33 rounder. It's straight from the Glock factory. You can buy them. They're well, they're 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 well made, good quality, and it's certainly the easiest way to do things. You just bang, buy it, throw it in, and there you go. Uh, the standard magazines from Glock are good as well, depending on the Glock model you have and what capacity you're looking to have as far as a standard, you know, a standard. Uh, I come at it with a mindset: this gun is set up more for like a home defense or a duty type use. So in the home defense realm, I want as many rounds on the gun as I can without sacrificing the handling. Uh, a full 33 rounder does change the feel of the gun in my hand a little bit because you got a lot of bullets uh, coming out of that magwell and it's longer. There's a lot of weight to it. It changes a little bit, not a lot, but it changes a little bit. I prefer to go this route. It's less ammo, but I still have a good amount where I can pick this gun up in a nightstand if I want to and get going with it. And I still have a good amount of ammunition because the reality is for home defense, you're going to explore. If you need to leave your room and you need to go explore things for whatever reason, you're going to have the gun and whatever is on the gun as far as ammunition, that's what you get. So think about that when you're thinking about magazine extensions. Along with that magazine extensions right here, extended base plates, all that good stuff. 
make sure they're good quality. Uh, this one, Strike Industries, is pretty good quality. There's a lot of manufacturers out there, so do your research. Also, if you're going to change the base plate, uh, you need to change the spring. Don't just stick with the factory spring. It can work, but you want to get an extra power spring in there, so that way you get good compression, good feeding, all that good stuff. So after that, what else? For the grips, now this is entirely up to you. This is a Gen 4, which has a pretty good uh, grip texture, so the Gen 5s. The Gen 3s and 2s and 1s, a little bit less so, but it's not too bad. Um, changing the, the texture of the grip with a wraparound like this Talon right here. This is what I recommend. The reason I recommend this over doing stippling is you're not changing the gun permanently at all. This stuff works really well. You apply it correctly. It's solid. It'll last for years. When it starts to wear off, you peel it off. It's no residue pretty much except for little minute pieces of glue that you can just kind of peel right off. Uh, and you can throw another one on or if you just decide that you don't want to use it anymore, you can peel it right off. So I really like that. I have that on a lot of my guns. I like the sandpaper type grip. They also have the rubberized, but I really like the sandpaper type just because it locks the gun in my hand. Now, if you want to do stippling, sure, go ahead. Just know that you're changing the gun permanently, so to speak. So uh, if you stipple it, make sure it's a really good job. But I think that helps with the grip because it really locks the gun in your hand. Uh, let's go on to some other modifications. There is none. Pretty simple, right? I didn't do anything to the internals. Um, you can change the sights if you so choose. I still have the Glock night sights. They work good for me, but you can change them. Throw a good set of night sights or maybe fiber optic on there. That's up to you and your, you know, what works best for you depending on your vision, uh, whether you wear glasses, contacts, all that good stuff. Uh, my vision is still pretty good, so I'll stick with the Glock night sights for now, but subject to change, I may change these out if I find some good. Maybe I'll get some Trijicon HDs for it, but making sure the sights that work I like night sights. You don't necessarily need night sights, but I do like the idea of having night sights. That's just me. But there's no modifications. I didn't make any modifications to the slide. I should say internally, that is. There's no modifications to the trigger. None of that stuff. No spring modifications. No recoil, guide rod modifications. None of that. Why? Because the gun works just fine. Uh, you have to be careful with when you're buying a gun like a Glock, They've built their reputation on their design and a lot of it to really good marketing. So when you look at a Glock, eh, you know, it's one of those guns that you just associate. Yeah, it's going to work. Well, if it works from the factory, why are you changing it? Because when you start changing it, you start changing how the design is and it can throw certain things off. So I would say that's why I said in the very beginning of this video, you want to train. Get out there and train with it. You'll realize that the gun shoots ultra flat. You don't need anything. You don't need anything at all. Um, you don't need to mess with the trigger. Yeah, there are better triggers out there and I get it, but I have no problems with the standard trigger. I would venture if you're wanting to get a gun with a better trigger than the Glock, then don't get a Glock for the same price. Get something like this. This has a way better trigger than a Glock. Um, but in any case, this video is about how to upgrade your Glocks practically. By doing this, you're setting up your Glock in such a way that you can shoot it, use it. It's very reliable. Uh, you're not spending tons of money just working on the hardware problem, which lends more time and more money that you can focus on the software problem, which is you getting out there, training, buying ammunition, getting the dry fire in, all that good stuff, making yourself very good with the chosen tool. So there it is. There's my video, just basic best upgrades for the Glock. It's really simple. Some people might be mad thinking, hey, you're not talking about stuff. This is more of a philosophy video. Yeah, you're right. It kind of is. Keep it simple. I've said that for years in my videos. When it comes to real hardcore self-defense, keep it simple. Keep it effective. Um, if you don't believe me, just go on YouTube. Look at a lot of people that have the Gucci Glocks, and some of them work really well. They manage to tune them just right, which they work really well, but there's thousands of dollars put into them. Uh, others, they work good, but then you'll notice, and they may not talk about it, but you'll see mind your malfunctions in the videos. You'll see the, the, the changes in how the gun's working. Um, 
and I'm not going to bet my life on that. I, I, I want a gun that just runs. So with that said, feel free to throw your comments in the comment section below as always, and I hope you're staying safe out there.